Okay, to be mindful, uh, we're going to get started. Everything I say will also be in the chat as well. Welcome to the Texas Association for College Admission Counseling. Thank you for being here virtually either live or watching this recording. If you're here live, a few things that's very important. Our panelists cannot see or hear you. So if you have a question during this 45 minute session, you need to use the Q&A button at the bottom or top of your screen. The Q&A button is gonna be the only way that you'll be able to ask a question during this 45 minute session. You can sign up for more sessions the same place that you signed up for this one. And a recording of this, of course, is available on our website as always. And we will be pushing it out to anyone who registered and of course our panelists as well. All right, let me stop sharing my screen. And with that, we are going to kick it off with the University of Texas at Austin. Thank you so much, Christy. I apologize to everyone. I realized I did not change my name on here. This is our executive um, <clears throat> director of recruitment's name, um, but my name is Jessica Thomas. I'm an admissions counselor with the University of Texas at Austin, and I'm super excited to be joining you guys today. Um, I know that each of us only has a couple short minutes, so I definitely don't want to waste any time, and I just want to go over some quick facts and figures about UT Austin and some of the great things that we have to offer to our students. So of course, being UT Austin, we are right in the heart of downtown Austin, Texas. We are the number one boom town for the next decade, which means that we have everything from Fortune 500 companies, tech companies, Google, Dell, Amazon, Apple, Oracle, pretty much everything that you can think of, the UT Dell Medical Center, countless nonprofits around the city. So no matter what you're looking to go into, um, I know tonight we are here focusing more on the liberal arts and being here in the city of Austin, we have tons of opportunities being with, <clears throat> excuse me, we have tons of opportunities to share with students from volunteer opportunities, shadowing to professional opportunities, internships while you're in school. Actually, statistically, our students graduate with two to three internships under their belt during their time here at the institution. So you have tons of really great opportunities to choose from during your time here at UT Austin. So the University of Texas at Austin is the number one ranked public university in the state of Texas. We are also very proud to call ourselves 10th in the nation and 36th across the world. So this truly is a university of the first class. And just a little bit about our students. We do have over 51,000 students on our campus with about 40,000 of those encompassing our undergraduates, representing all 50 states, 120 countries, and every nook and cranny of the state of Texas. Now we know that we are quite a large campus, but we actually like to say that you can't make a small campus feel big, but you can absolutely make a big campus feel small. Now I know you guys are probably thinking, you just said you have over 40,000 undergraduate students. How could you possibly make that feel small? Well, we actually have tons of opportunities on our campus to make sure that our students feel like they're at home. From first year interest groups where you're a part of a group in liberal arts where you're going to be with other students who are in the same major as you. They're going to be a, assigned a peer mentor, so you're going to have someone to turn to who is an actual student on the campus within your major who's there to help guide you through your first year at the institution. Now through our campus, we do actually have an 18 to one student faculty ratio. So that does bring down um, some of those scary big numbers that you guys just saw so that you know that your professors still have time for you. When you are majoring in English or in history or in government and you start out in a larger class, those are actually gonna become so much smaller as you get into your sophomore and junior year. And you're gonna be able to have that one-on-one -on -one time with your professors, that one-on-one -on -one time with your peers. And you're even gonna have free tutoring and help in these classes through our single learning center on our campus. So there's tons of opportunities for you to not only get involved on the campus, to be part of these academic organizations within liberal arts, but also having the opportunity to socially be part of the liberal arts community. We also have almost a 97% freshman retention rate, which means that when students come to UT Austin, they stay at UT Austin. And that's something that we're really proud of. They really love their time here on the 40 acres, not only getting to utilize all the resources we have available on the campus, 
but also in the beautiful city of Austin. And then of course, what you guys are here tonight is to learn about the fields of study. So specifically within our College of Liberal Arts, we do have over 40 different majors in that college. And we also have our pre-law program within that college. So if you're interested in going on to law school after you graduate, you can actually utilize those resources within our Department of Liberal Arts. You're gonna get help with the MCAT. You're also gonna have the opportunity to be able to <clears throat> take on any other certificates or minors that you're interested in across the campus. And many of these are housed right in the College of Liberal Arts. Our College of Liberal Arts is our largest college on the campus. So we're able to utilize a lot of different programs, including our humanities program, which is a program that is restricted to Students who are sophomores and above, it's something that you can come into the College of Liberal Arts, have time to work on your core curriculum classes and really get to know the university and what you want to study better. And our humanities program within Liberal Arts is going to allow you to create your own degree on the campus. So you can take aspects of all different programs and decide what you want to study here. And then, of course, you know, we have all of our languages on the campus from Japanese to Spanish to sign language that you can study within the liberal arts, as well as government history and tons of cultural <coughs> cultural classes that you're going to be able to utilize throughout your time here at the university. So the College of Liberal Arts is a really great opportunity, especially for those students who maybe aren't sure what they want to study yet. A great thing that we have in our College of Liberal Arts is something that we like to call undeclared. So if you're not sure exactly what you want to pursue just yet, or maybe you want to get to the campus and really get acquainted with some of the programs that we have, get involved in some of the student organizations, figure out what is the best path for you, you can actually come into our College of Liberal Arts that's undeclared. And you're going to have a specific academic advisor who's going to get to work with you as an undeclared student. And this is what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. So they're going to be able to help you find that path that is going to fit you best. And then we also have our very own <coughs> career center in the College of Liberal Arts. It's specific to that college. So when you're working with an advisor who's going over your resume, maybe doing mock interviews, internship or career opportunities, you're gonna be working with someone who works with students specifically in your major within the College of Liberal Arts. So you're not just gonna be getting general information you're gonna be getting information that is tailored to you as a student to make sure that you are on the best path to being able to get those jobs that you want, get the internships that you want. And you're gonna be able to utilize those resources all the way up into a year after you graduate. And then just a little snapshot of some of the rankings we have here at UT Austin. We do have a lot of top tier programs that are some of the best across the nation. And we really like to highlight those. Now, this is by no means an exhaustive list, but we just want to give you a little snapshot that no matter what you study at the institution, you will absolutely be set up for success. And of course, we are always here to help. So please feel free to reach out to us with any questions you have, and I'll be happy to pop this in the chat box as well. Thank you so much and pass it back to you, Christy. All right. Thank you. Next up, we have Lawrence University. Hi, everyone. My name is Joe Johnson, Associate Director of Admissions at Lawrence University. I use he, him pronouns. Lawrence is a small college and conservatory of music located in the town of Appleton, Wisconsin. So we're taking a little road trip or a quick flight, maybe a medium length flight up to the Midwest. Uh, our population of Appleton is 70,000 student, uh, 70, excuse me, 70,000 folks, and metro population is 250,000. So Appleton is, of course, going to have a small town feel but you get all of the big city resources and amenities from a local regional airport to internship opportunities, transit, great coffee shops, and a really incredible food scene, uh, as well as museums, a farmer's market one block from campus, even a performing arts center that brings Broadway touring productions like Hamilton, Dear Evan Hansen, Wicked, and more just one mile away from our campus. So what is Lawrence? We're unique in that we are both a college of liberal arts and sciences and a well-known and highly selective conservatory of music. Between the two, we offer over 64 areas of study, including the option of pursuing a five-year double degree program. 
with one degree from the conservatory and one degree from the college. Now, thinking about academics here at Lawrence, it's important to remember that Lawrence students, because of our really tight knit collaborative atmosphere, are challenged and nurtured through really individualized learning experiences. Part of that is due to our small size, you know, the eight to one student faculty ratio that we have here at Lawrence, one of the smallest in the nation, but I have an even smaller stat for you. 63% of all of the courses we offer here at Lawrence are one student and one professor. Yeah, let that sink in. 63% are you and a professor exploring an area of interest to you, diving deeper into research with professors, getting involved in helping them write or edit their book, getting prepared to present your own research at local or regional conferences. You get graduate level mentorships at the undergraduate level here at Lawrence. Our students are, of course, inherently curious, they're creative, they're highly engaged and passionate. And our faculty are just as engaged and passionate, not just with their own scholarship and research, but when it comes to mentorship and teaching. It's not uncommon to be invited to a professor's house for dinner or uh, you know, co-present with them, like I mentioned, uh, at, you know, with your advisor at a conference. That's part of the Lawrence experience. Now, the academic curriculum here at Lawrence is bookended by two experiences, the first year studies program and our Chandler senior experience program. First year studies is this expansive introduction to the liberal arts and, and the idea of the liberal arts. It talks about an introduction for our honor code that we have here at Lawrence. And there's a shared syllabus of works, including Plato's The Republic, Alison Bechdel's Fun Home, Miles Davis's Kind of Blue, Natasha Trethewey's Native Guard, and more. In this class, Laurentians are taught to think critically, read critically, and write critically, to synthesize and analyze information, to debate, and communicate effectively across a wide variety of disciplines. And then after, you know, after four years here at Lawrence, you get to share your light, your growth, your experience, your expertise with the world in an independent or collaborative research project, paper, uh, scholarly research, senior recital, some way to showcase your growth and learning over your time here. Now, it's not all about academics when it comes to college. You also need to find a place you're gonna feel at home. And we're a fully residential campus here at Lawrence. 100% of our students are living on campus all four years uh, with over 23 different NCAA Division III varsity sports, 14 world-class music ensembles, including opera theater, um, 150 plus clubs and organizations, including a student-run garden and even the world's longest running trivia contest, the Great Midwest Trivia Contest. If there's something you're passionate about, there's a place for it here at Lawrence. And if you ever get tired of being on campus, we actually have two satellite campuses. One is a retreat center up on the shores of Lake Michigan, pictured here, called Bjorklunden. Yes, that's how you pronounce that. Uh, it's 441 acre state lodge and student retreat center for our community. It's a fantastic place to spend a weekend getaway. Our third campus is the London Center, and over 40% of our students will study abroad during their time at Lawrence, either at the London Center or on one of our other 45 plus programs. It's very easy to fit in study abroad here, even if you are a musician, a STEM major, an athlete, or all of the above, because you can do all of that here at Lawrence. And if you're looking for a community that's already rich in diverse perspectives, you'll find it here as well. 30% of our students self-report and self-identify as students of color here at Lawrence. Uh, another 15% of our students are international students. 25% are first generation. And um, when it comes to wide varieties of, of diverse perspectives, including socioeconomic diversity, over 20% of our students are Pell Grant eligible. Just to give you a sense of the types of experiences and the types of perspectives you'll encounter here at Lawrence. So what's the next step for you? If you're just getting started with your college search, I encourage you to tour our stunning campus for yourself. We are open for campus visitors um, and you'll get to pick up a free Lawrence t-shirt when you visit. If you're a senior, uh, later this summer, once the common application opens, you can start your application for free to Lawrence. There's no application fee and you can see the deadlines pictured here on the screen. We also offer substantial and generous financial aid. Scholarships at Lawrence range between $15,000 and $31,000 a year renewable every single year that you're a student, and there are a number of other scholarship opportunities as well. We currently meet the full demonstrated financial need for over 95% of our student body, 
and we have raised the funds to become a full need institution within the next few years. So with that, I'll turn it over to our next institution, uh, but don't be afraid to reach out to me, Joe Johnson, Associate Director of Admissions and 2017 graduate of Lawrence. Um, and I'll also put the contact info for your area counselor, um, who I'm filling in for today, Galen Rose, who works with students from Texas. Thanks so much for your time, everyone. Thank you. Next up, we have University of Minnesota. All right. All right, well, hi everyone. Um, my name is Pachia and I am representing um, the College of Liberal Arts from the University of Minnesota. So here at the University of Minnesota, we like to say for our students to come curious because no matter what, they will be driven to discover our great academics where we are a land grant research university. So what that means is that if you are looking to do research during your undergrad, we do about 90% of Minnesota's research right here on our campus. You will also get to discover our diverse and tight-knit community of students where you can gain an expanded global perspective. Um, many of our students also go on to engage in real-world experiences through research, internships, study abroad, um, and community engagement. Last but not least, you will also be driven to discover what it's like to attend a Big Ten University, where we are a large public institution with competitive athletic programs and a tremendous amount of school spirit. Um, so here at the University of Minnesota, we have eight freshman admitting colleges. All of these colleges make up the 150 undergraduate programs we offer. As an incoming freshman, you will get admitted into one of these colleges right away. That's why I'm here to highlight um, our College of Liberal Arts within the University of Minnesota. So here in CLA or College of Liberal Arts, we have a wide breadth and depth of academic programs with over 60 majors and 30 minors. Out of the 150 majors the U of M offers, our, our college holds 70 of those majors. So though we do have seven other colleges here um, who are solely dedicated towards say, um, just business or the study of biology or math and STEM. At our College of Liberal Arts, we have all of that and more. So we can find here um, within CLA is that you will have access to an array of different academic programs. And that just gives you more opportunities um, to explore and more room to add on to your degree. Many of our students do finish with a double major or multiple minors to make their degree that much more unique and robust. So because we do have many programs for you to choose from, I have broken them down to four different areas so you can see for yourself um, what you can choose to study. So first we have our majors in arts, communication, and media. These are where our dreamers are, our visual and hands-on creative learners. Um, so we have programs like in acting, dance, theater, strategic communication, or journalism. We also have majors in science and math where you can find programs such as astrophysics, computer science, or even speech language and hearing sciences. And then you can also find unique programs within our humanities, culture, and language type majors. And what's really cool about our language programs is that we offer 25 modern and ancient languages. Um, and all of our students pursuing a Bachelor of Arts within the College of Liberal Arts here, they must take a second foreign language to complete their degree. We are also the only college and university in the nation that offers Ojibwe as a language as well. And last but not least, our most highly enrolled programs are within our social sciences programs, where psychology is actually the number one program students come to the University of Minnesota for. All right, so now that you have an idea of the programs that we carry, we are going to move on to the heart and soul of the College of Liberal Arts um, here at the U. This here is what we call our core career competency will. And this is what today's employers are saying that they want to have in an employee or someone who is applying for a job straight out of college. They want someone who can engage in diversity. They want someone who has analytical and critical um, thinking skills. They want someone who can be innovative and creative. So here within our College of Liberal Arts, we guarantee that you will learn and use these competencies within all of your courses and within any program that you choose to pursue. That way, with a CLA degree, you can go into any career that you want, because no matter what, whether it's the business world, nonprofit, education, law, healthcare, or even government, 
you will have all 10 of these competencies to help you be successful in any career that you choose. And that right there is what I always love to say is our liberal arts advantage here at the University of Minnesota. Um, now I also want to touch a bit upon our location. Our campus is located right in the middle of a thriving metropolitan area between St. Paul, our state capital, and Minneapolis. You'll also be surrounded by our lively college campus town called Dinky Town. Um, but not only that, being in our Twin Cities, you will get to experience lots of culture, sports, diversity, um, all of that to keep your social life entertaining as a college student. But in addition, our location also sets up our students for success. We have 16 Fortune 500 companies right in our backyard. So right away, you have immediate access to internships, community engagement um, during your undergrad, as many of our programs are partnered with local businesses and community orgs. And although we are in the middle of two major cities, you still get that traditional campus feel here at the U of M um, because we don't have skyscrapers hovering over our campus. Just as the picture shows right there, there will be job opportunities waiting for you in the city skyline as soon as you graduate. All right, so now we're going to move on into admissions. Um, so juniors and under, if you're thinking about applying to the University of Minnesota, this is what you need in order to become a full applicant. You can choose to do the common application or our in-house app, the Golden Gopher app. Um, you must have the application itself, a self-reported academic record where you self-report your own courses and grades from ninth through 12th grade, and then also the $55 application fee. Um, anything else underneath that, as you can see, ACT score, uh, resumes, letter of recs, those are all optional, but we will still take those into serious consideration if you send those in as well. All right, so I think that's all that I have for you today. Thank you all so much for having the College of Liberal Arts from the University of Minnesota here. Um, my contact email is ptow at umn.edu. I'll put it in the chat, but I hope to hear from many of you soon. So thanks, y'all. All right, thank you. Next up, we have University of North Texas. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lauren Norris. I'm an admissions counselor for University of North Texas. I'm incredibly excited to just get to talk to you about what makes UNT UNT, um, why I believe it is special, and I think it could potentially be a great fit for you. And we can basically dive into the College of Liberal Arts and Social Science majors as well. Sorry, it's freezing real quick, so bear with me real quick. Okay, perfect. Um, so where UNT is located, um, you may have heard of UNT Dallas or the UNT Health and Science Center. Um, don't confuse those with UNT Denton, University of North Texas. So we basically have the main campus, which is Denton. Um, that is going to be northwest of Dallas, but it's almost smack dab in the middle um, between Dallas and Fort Worth. So we're right in the middle of the DFW Metroplex, which is really strategic and really helpful. Um, something that the president of UNT really emphasizes is um, basically getting the post-grad opportunities after. Um, so of course you're going to enjoy your university experience and the programs that you're going to be pursuing, but we also wanna make sure that you're gonna be set up for success afterwards as well. Um, so DFW alone has 24 Fortune 500 companies. So this is gonna be really helpful, um, but also our president of UNT basically is um, putting out a um, unpaid internship scholarship, scholarship, excuse me, for the whole semester that you possibly are going to do and pursue an internship where you may or may not be paid. Um, so Denton alone, it was voted the best small town in America, but also a best college town in America as well. Um, Frisco, it's going to be one of our smaller campuses. Um, if you prefer smaller class size, um, it's basically in a business park area in Frisco. So Frisco is just going to be a little closer to Dallas and it's number two um, as best cities for jobs post-graduation of 2020. We were named at Best in the West College and we have been by Princeton Review for 13 consecutive years. And we have 20 programs ranked in the top 100 in the nation. And this is also um, stated by US News and World Report. Um, something to note is we are a member of the Excellence in Community College Transfer Honor Roll. And we have been by the prestigious Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society. Um, and this has been a title of ours for five years in a row as well. Um, something that if you are considering transferring eventually to an institution or a 
university, specifically UNT, we have these things called transfer guides where you can see the entire curriculum that you can get that transferred over depending on which major you want to filter it towards. Um, so I believe different resources like this can give us titles um, of such as STEAM. <laughs> So some things that I want to mention just in general, um, our first, um, our programs, the aviation logistics and the consumer experience management, as well as emergency administration and planning were the first undergraduate programs um, such as their own um, in the US. But some of our excellence programs, um, the graphic design program is technically known as communication design. Um, it was ranked number two in the whole Southwest region in the US and fourth in the nation. We also have a fantastic business economics program that we're um, definitely known for, but we are highly known as our College of Music. We have a fantastic College of Music. Um, our jazz studies is number two in the nation and our jazz band within our music program um, has won seven Grammys. Um, Something that I like to mention is we are a tier one research university. Basically what this means is our professors receive the highest paying grants. So they're allowed to do as much research as needed that that grant provides. They bring that back to the classroom. That also allows us to hire some of the best of the best nationally, internationally ranked professors as well. Um, it also means that you don't have to wait for your graduate degree to perform um, research. So you have a ton of undergraduate programs and different opportunities to perform research in your field. We do have a larger student population. Um, we have hit record enrollment for the past three years, and we have 42,000 students currently on campus right now. And we are, of course, one university, 12 colleges, and the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences is one of those. And then we have the Denton, Frisco, and online portals that you can use to pursue your degrees with us. Um, we do offer 109 bachelor's degrees currently. I know they're putting out about three more for the next year. Um, and we have 94 master's and 36 doctoral programs. So there are certain ones like our psychology program. It is the most populated program of ours, as we are a liberal arts school. Um, but basically, you can continue from your bachelor's as well onto your master's and even a PhD um, in psychology as well. Something to get involved with on campus, um, because we have such a large student population, um, it can potentially be a little overwhelming. We do offer over 425 student organizations. And if you do see something on our website um, and you kind of have brainstormed that you want to create a student organization, it's actually not hard at all with us. You just need seven other friends and advisor um, to create one as well. So out of 425, if you still see something that you want to pursue, um, we can make that work too. Um, something that I also like to mention is we are a Hispanic serving institution. Basically, what this allows us to do is we receive grants that we can provide to our Hispanic populated students. Um, this gives them resources and specific scholarships um, in addition. So it also helps for possibility of first generation students and just additional specific office and resources for um, assistance with any potential questions that they may have. We do have 14 residence halls and five dining halls. So we have quite a bit. Um, we have the Mean Greens Cafe. It's the first vegan dining hall that's 100% vegan. Um, the first in, of its kind in the US. And then we have Kitchen West. It basically eliminates all the big eight allergens that you possibly have. So you can go there confidently knowing if you pursue any of those diets. So we basically like to be super inclusive in um, how we provide for our students and the different resources that we do. So I listed all of our College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences programs. Um, we have quite a bit, um, but we do have the Mayburn School of Journalism and different programs under that, such as advertising and public relations and converged broadcast media. And we have quite a bit of different world languages, literatures, and cultures as well. Feel free to take a look at the different sports that we have listed as well. We are in CAA D1 school. And then our admissions requirements, we have three steps, an application, transcripts, and you'll view your MyUNT portal for an admissions decision. You'll just need 3.0 unweighted GPA or a top 25% of your class. Thank you so much for listening to my presentation. It was great speaking with y'all. Thank you so much. Next up, we have Austin College. Hi, everybody. My name is Hank Eward. I'm Executive Director of Admission at Austin College. And let me show you one image of the college.
Um, and I'm going to characterize Austin College uh, in terms of its academic program for you this evening. Um, Austin College is a true liberal arts college. We have 1,300 students. Uh, we have always been small. It's essential to our uh, education and our overall experience to remain small. We always will be. We're the third oldest college in Texas, founded in 1849. Uh, average class size is 15. Student to faculty ratio is 12 to 1. We're located in Sherman, Texas, which is um, about half an hour northeast of the Dallas Metroplex, about an hour, just about exactly from the center of Dallas, depending on traffic. Um, as I said, we're a true liberal arts college, and that means that we have strength across the academic spectrum. We're strong in humanities, social sciences, natural sciences, business, economics, technical fields. Um, we, a um, couple of distinguishing things, um, over 80% of our students live on campus. There's a true campus community. And just about 100% of our students graduate in four years or fewer. In fact, we have a finish in four guarantee. So a, a full-time student who at the end of four years still needs a, one or two credits for some reason um, can expect the college to pay for those credits. So really just about 100% graduating in four years or fewer. Uh, we have an unusually large number of students um, with two majors. We require a major and a minor, but it's not unusual for a student to end up uh, turning what might have been a minor into a second major. We encourage variety and depth, um, eclecticism. Um, and uh, because of that strength across the academic spectrum, our usual list of most popular majors spans the academic spectrum. So um, most years, biology is our most popular major. Um, very, very strong department, has some related majors that are also very strong. We have a reputation for um, great admission results with medical schools and other postgraduate health care pathways, uh, which is one of the reasons why biology is so popular. Not that all biology majors go into health care. We actually have a lot who, uh, who do research in biology or become teachers or professors. Um, other mo most popular majors most years would include business psychology, computer science, um, history, and education, but the list varies a little bit. Um, and being most popular doesn't mean you're better than the others. We're strong, again, across the spectrum. We have excellent programs, um, just about any which way you'd want to go. Um, classes are interactive. Our largest class in the given year might have 35 students. Every single class involves discussion every day, debate every day. Um, it's, this is not the type of environment where you take a lot of lecture classes and wait until the last five minutes to ask a question. It is really an interactive process. Um, liberal arts sometimes has the stereotype of not being practical in terms of postgraduate outcomes. We're proud of our postgraduate outcomes. And part of the reason that we, we have students who do so well um, in graduate school, professional school, and later life has to do with the fact that um, every program at Austin College has a strong emphasis on applicability in the world and development of skills for the world. In fact, one of our diploma requirements is in uh, applied learning. So every, literally every area of study has some important applied learning activity, internships, combination of internships, research experiences, and so forth. Um, it is not unusual for our undergraduate students to present at professional conferences, and it is also not unusual for our students to go far and wide to, uh, to connect their academic and intellectual experience with the larger world. A core value is internationalism. We have quite a number of areas of study related to um, international things, um, and also under, under normal circumstances, of course, the last three years have not been normal circumstances, but normally about two-thirds of our students will have an academic experience for credit outside the United States. Um, we think that our type of education actually endows students with significant score, core skills in terms of problem solving, communication, um, research skills, writing skills um, that 
benefit them not only uh, in graduate school and professional school or in their first job, but really in the whole career, in all of their jobs. Um, related to this and related to the subject of majors, liberal arts majors, uh, Austin College does not admit by major. Um, we, ex we expect students to explore. We know that some of our students are going to major in what they say they're going to major in in their application. We're interested in what they say they're going to major in. We'll provide specific information related to that, uh, but we're happy if they make a dramatic change, um, and some do, or add something really significant. Again, they will graduate in four years, even if they wait until the end of sophomore year to decide what they're really going to major in or to add a second major, um, they're still going to graduate in four years um, with a very, very strong postgraduate pathway developed. Every student has a um, mentor professor that they meet literally at the beginning of their career. That professor will teach them in the first semester of college that role is not tied to their intended major. They'll also get an advisor from their major or majors, but they can keep the same mentor professor through the four years. This role is particularly helpful in the first year and a half of college. It really, in my opinion, that's, that's when it's most valuable, when students are deciding what they're really gonna major in, confirming what they were interested in, making a change, exploring, adding interests, there's a professor who's going to keep you from getting off track. Um, very important reason why so many, why our students graduate in four years. It's difficult to get off track and have to add a semester or more to your career because of a change that you made. Um, in general, Austin College is looking to build a diverse community, academic and intellectual community, and, and just community. Uh, we're an extremely diverse institution. Our, um, percentage of students of color is 51%. Um, we're equally diverse by every in every other dimension of diversity, uh, socioeconomic, um, everything, and uh, uh, all that intellectual. I mean, uh, sorry, all that diversity melds into one really connected and supportive community. So we're looking for a wide variety of people, uh, and if you're interested in that type of experience. I'll put my contact information in the chat. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Uh, next up, we have University of Missouri. Sorry, y'all, I was still on mute. All right, hello, I wanted to introduce myself real quick. My name is Samantha and I'm the regional representative in Fort Worth, Texas for Mizzou. I'm originally from St. Louis and now I live here in Fort Worth and I graduated from Mizzou in 2015 with a bachelor's degree in communications. I'm excited to tell you about our school today and some of our liberal arts programs. So first off, we are the University of Missouri and there are two ways to apply to our school. One being through the common application and the other is directly through our website. We are looking at 17 core classes, four years in English, four years in math, three years in social studies, three years in science, two years of the same foreign language and one year of fine art. Along with those core classes, we're looking for a 24 ACT or 1160 SAT. There are two ways to apply, one being with a test score or the other is test optional. If you decide to apply test optional, you will submit simply submit a essay question instead of your test score. Now diving into our liberal arts programs at Mizzou, our liberal arts programs falls under the College of Art and Science and they are clustered into three groups. Fine Arts, Humanities, and STEM. Diving into our Fine Arts degree programs, you can find art, art history, film studies, film production, music, and theater. One of our newer programs is actually digital storytelling, where students put storytelling first 
and combine this with new and emerging technologies. This will emphasize skills in video production, emerging media, animation, video, writing, and critical theory. We also do offer graphic design, and that would fall under the fine arts degree program as well. Our second cluster is humanities, where students have a wide array to choose from. I like to talk about the communication major because that's what my degree is in. With our communications majors, you acquire expertise in oral, written, visual, and mediated communication. Our sociology majors study the big questions and problems of the 21st century. One thing about Mizzou, no matter what degree program you choose, you will get hands-on learning built into your experience, and we call this the Missouri Method. Some of our programs to highlight in our STEM cluster of liberal arts is our textile and apparel management, which is also known as TAM. TAM's award-winning faculty is internationally recognized and ranked as one of the top programs of its kind. Another highlight of our STEM cluster is our architectural study program where you can choose between interior design or architecture and both emphasis areas focus on the development of environmental designs for human living and work and leisure. That program has actually seen an enrollment growth of 27%, which we are super excited about. And again, no matter what program you choose at Mizzou, you will get that hands-on learning experience built into your program. So by the time you graduate, you have a full resume and are ready to go into the real world. A little bit about our Discovery Center. It is a campus-wide student resource located in the Mizzou Student Success Center. They provide academic direction and support to undergraduate students who are exploring multiple academic pathways. The academic advisor and the student work together to find the fit between the student's interests and what Mizzou has to offer. Ultimately, our students, if they use the Discovery Center, will learn to navigate and take full advantage of everything our university has to offer. A little bit about our Honors College. We actually have the oldest Honors College in the nation. And once you are admitted to Mizzou, you can apply to our Honors College through a separate application. Our Honors College actually has many benefits like Honors Housing and Advising, unique and small courses, and my favorite, early class registration. Our Honors Program also has a Scholars and Fellow Program, each of which provide unique academic benefits and opportunities. So listed here real quick are some important dates when applying to Mizzou. We suggest applying by December 1st because that is when a lot of our competitive scholarships are due. When you apply to Mizzou, we will automatically screen your application for scholarships and awards through the summer after your senior year. And when we look at your application, we'll be looking for those awards based upon your GPA and your test score. We are very proud to say this year we've awarded over $168 million in scholarships just through those automatic awards. Lastly, Missouri does make it very easy to gain residency to obtain in-state tuition through a 12-month straightforward process. Very cool. And we really encourage you to come and see us on campus if you're able to. We know that traveling isn't necessarily in the cards for everyone right now, so we also have a variety of in-person or virtual opportunities for you to get to know Mizzou better. Whether you visit in-person or virtual, you can meet with academic mm -hmm. departments, current students, and even do walking tours of campus. And then lastly, um, I'm always here to help. Again, my name is Samantha Holmes. My Missouri Email is asksamantha at missouri.edu. Please feel free to reach out if you have any questions about Mizzou or the college process in general. Go Tigers. All right, thank you. I'm gonna try to share my screen here. All right, the last thing I just wanna say is thank you so much to all of the folks that were here to present uh, for your expertise. And my last plug will be to contact these folks. Uh, they are here to help you make sure that they can find uh, the right place for you. They are the experts. Um, so as you can see on my screen, uh, just thank you so much for being here, whether you're watching live or this recording, very important. Uh, sign up for more sessions, same place you signed up for this one. At our website is the recording. And again, thank you to our panelists. Thank you to the folks out there watching this and best of luck to you. And I hope you have a fantastic night.